Uh, good morning, my dear kids. Uh, in today's class, in the chapter optics, uh, in the chapter optics, uh, we are going to discuss the topic, the refraction. So already uh, previous class, if you look at here, we had the refraction at the Snell's law. Is what we are discussed here. Just the basic Snell's law. Uh, okay, then from there we derived an expression for Snell's law. Mm, then then we took some small small ideas that one so we didn't explore any of the numericals mm, or what you can say the application part mm. so from this class onwards what we see is like a, the application of the Snell's law mm. so the first application will be the uh, the apparent shift apparent depth and apparent height concept those things will be discussed mm. let me start the class So we have, uh, like if you remember the Snell's law, so let me choose a, a medium here. This is a boundary. Okay, this is a boundary. Slightly will increase the width. Now there's a boundary and this will become normal. This everything is water. Huh? Refractive index, let it be mu2 equal to mu. The refractive index of the rarer medium, let it be 1. Mu1 equal to 1. Let me keep a point object O. At a depth edge. Hmm. Now the ray is uh, it's a real object. Huh? So what is the condition? A real object. First case, a real object. Kept in a tensor medium and the viewed from that is medium so where is the viewer the viewer is here This eye, so is a going to view that one. Now we know it's a real object. <coughs> so the basic idea of a real object, like uh, it will emit uh, the incident rays, will diverge from that point where the real object is kept. There is some sort of like a, some coin is uh, is what which is kept here. Okay, now we'll go for the ray diagram. Let me take the take out the video. So the ray is emitted by it. This will be the normal what will draw it here. So look at the rays. The ray is emitted by this real object will diverge, will get refracted into the rarer medium. So the rays are moving from denser to rarer. So this is a normal. So the ray definitely will bend <coughs> away from normal. The ray will bend away from normal here. That Okay, now there's, there's a refracting angle. So let it be I. Let it be R. Angle of incidence, let it be I. Angle of reflection, let it be R. So this will be I. The refracted ray will diverge from this point. Mm -hmm. 
it has bent more. No? Let, let me bend it very less. Okay, now. So here, if I produce it back, it will meet at this particular point. Okay, this will be the image I. The real that this is apparent that. Okay, let me take this is P, this is M. So, which rays will enter into the human eye? Did this refracted rays? Huh? So, when an object will be visualized when the reflected rays or the refracted rays enter into eye. So, this human eye is able to see the Let me bring it so it will be much easier. So, the human eye is able to see this object because of the refracted rays will enter but whether it will be visible for this eye the object will appear at eye and what is this eye so th this is the real object and, and there is a virtual image though object is here when it is viewed then it will appear at eye so shall I say that some shift is there apparent Actually, the object is here, but it will appear near to the boundary. So, therefore, the word apparent is blocked here. Uh, now, now, what do you mean by here? Uh, the visualization. So, what do you mean by visualization? When refracted. Rays. Enter into. human eye the object is visible when refracted is entering into human eye then the particular object will be visible is telling it means the rays emitted by the object after a refraction if they enter into eye then that particular image of object will be visible when refracted is entering into human eye the image of object will write it the image the image of object is visible okay fine so there's a thing so actually object is at a depth h so but it will appear at a depth h so this is called okay, appears appears means apparent so what is H? H is a real depth. H is apparent depth here. Look at these symbols. These are very important. Okay, let I'm, I'm interested in knowing that one. So let's let's apply the Snell's law. Uh, now uh, applying the Snell's law. Mu two. sin i equal to mu 1 sin i and, and we'll, we'll go for paraxelis if m is very close to the p so it will be like almost like a normal weaving you are weaving it normally let let m be very close to p or, or normal weaving or for paraxial rays or considering paraxial rays or considering Per axle rays. So then, then what will happen? The the effect of this sine i 
will become tan r sin r will become tan r so this will be mu 2 tan i is equal to mu 1 tan r what is tan i tan i will be pm by pu tan r let me write that clearly virtual yeah. okay what is uh, tan i tan i will be pm by pu now what about tan r pm by pi i am interested in pi that one so mu 1 by mu2 into pu. What is pi further? This will be ha. Let me go for Okay, this will be mu2 into h1, real depth. If, if mu1 equal to the if this is a this is a water the mu1 will be 1 then the apparent depth will be because mu1 equal to 1 mu2 equal to mu if you substitute here <coughs> already we are defined apparent depth and the real depth so therefore when an object real object kept in denser medium and when viewed from rarer medium. So where is the weaver? Weaver is in rarer medium. Then it will appear nearer. See, it's a very uh, simple uh, thing. I don't want to trouble you much here. So let's let's talk about something very general things here. Suppose I have a bucket uh, or a tub something. Then uh, let it be filled up by water. Then you put some coin here, then try to weave it almost normally. So somewhere here you are. Then how do the coin, it will not appear here, it will appear somewhere here. You ask this I, where is the coin? You say that it is here. This is real depth. This is apparent depth. Are you able to get this one? There is a coin. The bottom of the bucket will appear nearer, no? Okay, next I think by laser, you can carry this mobile to bathroom, fill up water in a bucket. Then try to view the bottom of the bucket. It will appear nearer. Why? It means because of apparent shift here. So actually, where is the coin? If you ask two persons, so coin, coin is coin is at the bottom. So for this person, what to be commit? Coin is at a depth h. Actually, it is at a depth hr, but it will appear nearer. So, what is hr equal to? Yes, sorry, h is equal to hr by mu. It will appear near, no, mu will be greater than 1. So, therefore, what is the formula? Apparent depth. equal to real depth 
by refractive index of medium in which real object is present. Remember this particular formula. So the object will be so what we are discussing is for a normal view normal view all this this particular formula is applicable for normal weaving means something almost you are weaving it normally hmm? applicable Applicable for normal weaving. Okay, so this is about the so what is the conclusion now? An object kept in a denser medium, real object kept in a denser medium and weaved from the air medium, the object will appear near to the boundary. That conclusion also will make it here. An object a real object kept in denser medium and viewed from the other medium the object appears near to the boundary. Hmm? There is one conclusion. Complete description, I will show it. Okay. So when object and uh, and what all we are discussing is for normal weaving. Huh? This is a boundary, boundary or what you can call interface. What is a boundary? The one which will separate one medium to other medium, air and water. So this will be the boundary. And the normal drawn and the perpendicular. If I drop to the boundary, that will become normal. Here is what I applied a snell flow. Okay, now we'll take the next condition. Second one. Real object kept in a rarer medium kind of viewed from denser medium what will happen to the real object here Where it has gone? Oh, oh. just wait and I'll, I'll get it. Huh? No. So this is a real object. Somewhere here. Uh, and the person who is going to view will be here. Not appearing in okay, Kihai. Okay, where is the person? The viewer is here. And the real object is in rarer medium. There is a rarer medium. There is a denser medium. Now the rays 
emitted by real object will be incident here after refraction they will bend Now, this is a real object. So, what do you mean a real object? The incident rays will diverge from that particular point. After refraction, the rays, okay, there's a normal, I didn't draw it. So this will be the angle of incidence I this is R I so this is the R So this will become a, this will become P. This is M. Again for normal no, normal normal weaving. For normal weaving, or M will be very close P. Or for paraxial rays, this mm? the object is for normal weaving or object. is viewed normally or paraxial rays is considered or M is or M is very close to the P. It's a real object. Huh? We have virtual image so this is a real depth real height this is apparent height Okay, let the refractive index of this medium, let it be mu1, 1, 1. Okay, now, so the object is uh, in higher medium and the weaver is in denser medium and the object kept in higher medium and weave from the denser medium. Where do it appear? So let's apply the Snell's law. mu1 sin r equal to mu2 sin r for paraxial rays or for normal weaving mu2 tan r tan i will be pm by po tan r PM by PI. PI will be apparent height. Mu2 is mu. This is 1. PO is real height. 
So what is the conclusion? Apparent height is equal to refractive index of medium in which beaver is present into height of object from boundary everything from bound here apparent height okay yeah. there's a meaning of uh, that hr okay h i h a h r will write it so therefore so what is the conclusion real object in rare medium and when view from denser medium the real object will appear farther from the boundary there it was appear it was appearing nearer now this will appear farther i think when you are in swimming pool and try to look at the sky you know or look at some any building nearby it it will appear farther for you it will appear away from you in swimming pool try to view the sky or some any building so that particular building will appear further from you the reason for that is this condition what is thing real object <coughs> conclusion what will make it real object real object kept in a rare medium and when viewed from denser medium the object appears further from the boundary so this is a conclusion so it's a virtual image the image form will be virtual because the look at the refracted rays they they diverge from i you know so therefore the image form will be virtual here okay this is a basic formula okay similarly we'll explore now if a virtual object comes then what has to be what conditions have to be put here we'll we'll explore the now the third part virtual object third condition virtual object kept in a denser medium straight away we'll try to conclude things because already we know lot of the concepts so what do you mean by virtual object what do you mean by virtual object where the rays appear to converge if the incident rays appear to converge then it should be a virtual object so what what do you mean virtual object where the incident rays appear to converge so this medium is rarer this is a denser mu2 equal to mu 
mu1 equal to 1. This is a boundary. I have to draw so many things. Huh? Yeah, there's a boundary. Fine. Now what will happen? We know the rays are moving from rarer to denser. So they should bend towards normal. So the rays here after refraction they will bend and they will try to meet at this particular point. Okay, this will be virtual. This will be a real. Okay, there's a boundary. So uh, again, the same same symbols, everything. Huh? Let this be angle of incidence. I. Let this be R. Let this be I, let this be R. Okay, no, so this is the ray. After refraction, they will converge at this point. So now the refracted rays, where they converge, that particular point of convergence will be a real image. When the refracted rays diverge from a point, the point of divergence will be virtual. How to identify the image real or virtual? In case of reflection, it was uh, okay. If the rays diverge from a point, then the point of if the reflected rays diverge from a point, the point of divergence will be a real, will be a virtual image. If the reflected rays converge at a point, the point of convergence will be a real image. In case of refracted rays. If the refracted rays converge at a point, the point of convergence will be real image. If the refracted rays diverge from a point, the point of divergence will be a virtual image. So as the refracted rays are converging at a point, so therefore they should be real. So who is the weaver? The weaver is here. So he is a, he's a high. He is weaving it normally. So therefore for him, the object will appear further away from the boundary. So the same real depth and this will be the apparent depth. So what is apparent depth? Same same derivation. So instead of uh, writing it, deriving it, I'll directly write it here. So this will be mu2 by mu1 into HR or this will be mu HR. So what is the conclusion? If a virtual object kept in a denser medium and when viewed from a rare medium, the virtual object will appear further away from the boundary. Now similarly, uh, here only let me go forth. Virtual object kept in a rarer medium and viewed from denser medium. So where is the virtual object? Virtual object will be there in the
nou, ok, desfăc din nou mult. Nu, am alea ales și o baie mai picăruță. Ok, now the rays are moving from denser to rarer. So what should happen to this? The rays should bend. Away from normal. Oh, I have to... Let me redraw it. Let me redraw it. So this is the real object. This drawing diagram is really very <laughs> troublesome. Uh, now, so the ray is moving from denser to rather should bend away from normal. Okay. So after refraction, so this is the virtual object. virtual object real image so this is P this is M mu 2 equal to mu mu 1 equal to 1 this is error medium there's a denser medium. Actually, the I must not be there. The I must not be there. So, about the refracted rays will not enter anywhere, no? So, I'll, I'll, re I'll remove this I. This is not needed. Okay, now, now, uh, what is the conclusion now? So, where is the object? Object is in the rare medium, virtual object. So, you see the rays wants to converge at a point. After refraction, they'll meet at this point, particular point. The refracted rays converge at a point. So, there should be the real image. So, now, what is the real light? The real light is this one. Apparent light is this one. So, therefore, uh, what we can write here apparent height is equal to mu1 by mu2 into hr or hr by mu. So, what is the conclusion now? So, let, let me conclude these two here because this conclusion will help us a lot in numericals. Virtual object. kept in a denser medium and virtual object kept in a denser medium and view from rarer medium it will appear Farther away from boundary. So the same conclusion let me move this bits a bit here.
yeah fine virtual object kept in a rarer medium and when viewed from denser medium it will appear nearer to the boundary Okay, fine. So these are the four conclusions. Very, 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 very important. Hmm? So real object kept in a. So let let me just briefly summarize. We have started from here, no? complete page let it be visible hmm, yeah fine so now now uh, all of you listen so these are the basics uh, this is not numerical uh, this is a theoretical background what we needed before going to numerical real object is there you see the incident rays they are diverging from a point it's a real object real object hmm? so then after refraction the rays the refracted rays diverge from a point so then the image should be virtual hmm? virtual image so if the refracted rays diverge from a point the point of divergence will be virtual image okay then then object kept in a denser medium when view from a higher medium the image will appear what is the rather this is a denser so the object will appear near to the boundary that's why it's called as apparent depth ha will be less than hr next condition real object kept in a rarer medium and when view from denser medium the refracted rays again diverge from a point so therefore this must be a virtual image this should be a virtual real, virtual image and this is a real object see so the refracted rays they diverge from a point hmm? though object is here it will appear farther away from the boundary and we have a this particular formula you have to remember now this is for real object next virtual object virtual object kept in denser medium okay what will happen where do it will appear this one it will appear at the depth will further increase you can see mu h r mu will be greater than 1 so uh, we'll get a real image virtual object kept in a denser medium and when viewed means it will form a real image so how do the virtual object examples of virtual object you just do one thing take two laser guns try to focus at a point so we do that they'll finally they'll uh, instead of focusing here they'll get focused here this is the idea so how do sir we are not understanding what do you mean by that virtual so the the method is very simple so what we'll do is like i will take two laser guns so they will emit a light the emitted light instead of converging at this particular point and the go refraction and will converge here this idea so the focus the sharp focus instead of here you will get it here so this is a laser gun Hope, hope everyone is getting some idea what do you mean by virtual here the virtual means only take two laser guns let it get focused at a point 
instead of converging here these two rays they converge at this particular point so therefore this should be real this is a virtual if the refracted rays converge at a point real if the incident rays appears to converge at a point this should be a virtual object so how you how we define uh, real or virtual things you know, with respect to refracted rays we should have the idea so here we'll just have a some a brief discussion will make it uh, so that the coming topic this is going to help us a lot if incident rays diverge from a point the point of divergence is a real object then if the incident is converge appear to converge uh, if the incident is appear to converge at a point the point of convergence is a virtual object hmm? no if refracted rays diverge from a point the point of divergence is a virtual image next year if refracted rays converge at a point the point of convergence is a real object so a real image hmm. these are the for the factor rate these are the rules huh? what we should know okay there's only theory huh? this is all about the theory we must uh, Uh, work out numericals again. They just only information. Suppose if there are multiple layers of liquid are there, then what conditions will come? Multiple layers of liquid. What do you mean by multiple layers of liquid? Here, if I get like this, there are one layer. Okay, now now if the layers are there, H one, H two, H three. I kept a coin here at the bottom. Okay, fine. At the bottom of this container, a coin is kept. This is mu three, mu two, mu one. 
let me view normally we do it up here multiple layers are there earlier there was only one layer no now there are multiple layers are there then what conditions will come then the apparent depth from here is what will measure the apparent depth should be equal to <coughs> the apparent depth offered by the individual layers that one so what is the due to this layer how much h1 by mu1 due to this layer will be h2 by mu2 h3 by mu3 h1 by mu1 h2 by mu2 h3 by mu3 add up apparent depth due to individual layers uh, sir so like if the object is not at the bottom apparent what is h apparent depth of point Uh, the the particular coin may appear anywhere here. Huh? The coin may appear here, may appear here, may appear anything. It can be. If the coin is somewhere here, what you do? Then th this will not get added up. Huh? Small small thinking. Next situation. If the coin, I'll I'll keep it somewhere here. So we do that coin will appear for us. So this will be H two by two. So mu one, mu two, mu three. I'll I'll view it normally. Can we view it normally that one? In that case, so the apparent depth will be h1 by mu1 plus h2 by 2 mu2. The the layer this layer will not come into picture because the rays emitted by it will undergo refraction here and here. Will not undergo will will not undergo any refraction here. So therefore, the apparent depth due to layer three will not come into picture. What is the basic idea? Is that the the rays emitted by it will come here? Okay, fine. It will be. And finally, yeah, the rays emitted by it will undergo refraction. So no question of the mu3 will come will not come into picture here. Yes. So please try to understand the concept here, sir. Why you are writing formula? I'm not like why I'm writing the formula. <laughs> the rays here will undergo refraction. The rays will undergo refraction. The rays will undergo refraction. So therefore, the apparent depth of three layers will come. Here the ray will undergo refraction at between mu2, mu1, and mu1 and a. So therefore. The apparent depth of this liquid and this liquid also will come into picture. This mu three will not come into the final answer. And you should calculate this h two. What is h two? Uh, this is what is the depth? If the multiple layers also no problem. So we can use this particular formula. Okay, if there are n liquids are there, we can take care of this particular formula. now next condition if the refractive index of the liquid varies There's a container. Uh, 
the this is y equal to 0 the mu of liquid will vary in this way so let h be the bottom this is a liquid and this is and it is viewed normally So at what depth the bottom will appear for us? The bottom is at a depth h. The mu of a liquid varies in this way. Mu not equal to alpha y. So what is the apparent depth of the bottom? Find the apparent depth of the bottom. You have to calculate the apparent depth of the bottom. That one. So for that, what we do is like okay, we'll assume a small layer. At a depth y dy. First, the apparent depth of this layer will find out. Huh? What is the thickness of this layer dy? Then how much it will appear? dh equal to dy by mu. Mu naught alpha y. this will be integrating one by alpha d alpha y by log of mu naught plus alpha y 0 to capital H. By log mu naught. Okay, this apparent depth of bottom hmm? if the mu of a liquid varies with the depth known so then use this particular formula first what is the apparent depth of this layer layer of thickness dy what is the apparent depth dy by mu let the mu be the refractiveness here the refractiveness is mu naught as you move inside as the depth increases the refractive index will increase no that's what we are writing it here so first the apparent depth of a layer at a depth y of thickness dy is dy by mu then what is the apparent depth of the total liquid means the bottom is at a depth h here so where do it appear it will appear near the bottom will appear nearer somewhere is telling this is a formula well, the mu varies also as we can manage what is there in this one okay there is a weight formula what we can apply Okay, kids. Uh, okay, kids. Like uh, we had the discussion on the apparent shift. The theory part is what we have discussed. Okay, now in the coming class, we'll explore the numericals. Now we know the Snell's law on one side, the apparent shift. Hmm? Then we'll go for all the different types of the numericals that can be uh, done with the help of this basic background. Hmm? So don't miss. Uh, in the coming class, we'll be all about the the numerical, the refraction at plane surface, all the best numericals, what happened will be being will be discussed in the next class. Hmm? Okay, see you all of you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot hmm? for sharing the app and website. We'll meet uh, in next class. Hmm? Okay, bye. See you.